Today I'm going to show you a wicked little potato side dish. It doesn't take very long to knock up and it's going to be a great accompaniment to any meat. Hi, welcome along to Barbecue Life, where great barbecue doesn't have to cost a fortune. My name's Tom, and as I said at the beginning, today we're doing a potato side dish. So it's a kind of potato salad, but it's not mayonnaise based, it's a warm um, dish, but it's a wicked little side dish to go with any of your meats. So we start off with some baby potatoes, so about 900 grams of baby potatoes, and we just want to get these um, chopped up into the same sort of size. The so little ones you can chop into halves, and the bigger ones you can do into thirds or quarters, just so that they're all about the same sort of size, so they're all going to cook at the same rate. And we're going to uh, blaspheme now and take them indoors and put them on the hob, um, get them boiling and get them parboiled, so that um, the, we've started the cooking process before we put them on the Kamado. So we've got them indoors and now we need to get our Kamado lit so it is ready for when these potatoes are done. So we're going in with some Texas Club charcoal in the bottom of the Kamado Bono and then we're going in with a couple of little wax woodies. So we're going to get those in, get things lit. So lid open, bottom vent fully open for the time being just while them wax woodies are burning off. Once they've burnt out, we want to shut the lid down and we want to hinge that daisy wheel at the top open. And this will give us maximum airflow so that we can get that charcoal really starting to raw and warming up our ceramic. Once our ceramic is starting to warm up, that's when we need to dial in our temperatures. So we're aiming for about 150 degrees C today. So that's about one finger in the bottom vent and the top vent set to number one on the top and that should give us around 150 degrees C. But if you've been cooking meat in here at sort of 200 degrees C, like a spatchcock chicken or things like that, then this is gonna work at them temperatures as well. There's not a massive amount of cooking. A lot of this is like cooking off in a skillet. So the, the ambient temperatures inside the dome isn't gonna matter a massive amount. So we've got, we're have got getting them temperatures dialed in on there. While that's coming up to temp, we need to start preparing the rest of our uh, ingredients. So we've got a red onion, and we just need to get that diced up really nice and small. We don't want big chunks of onion in this. We want little tiny little chunks of onion. So we get that diced up nice and small, get that moved off to one side, and then we have got some smoked streaky bacon. So we want to take about eight slices of these, and again, we're just going to chop that up really small. So I'm just slicing it through into probably just under centimetre strips, and then we're going to cut them strips in half as well to give us little, tiny, like little, just under a centimetre square pieces of streaky bacon. So this streaky bacon, that is what we're going to be cooking off first, so we need to cook this in a pan. So we've got a nice large cast iron pan. Any pan is going to work on this as long as it's got a nice heavy bottom because we don't want to be burning things in there too much. If you want to use like a casserole dish style um, pan, then this is going to work just as well. But an, a shallow dish is even better. So we're going to get that on. We're going to let that cast iron come up to temperature as well because we don't want to be putting our bacon in there too early because then it's not going to crisp up. So our cast iron's up to temperature. Our kamado's set to about 150 degrees C and we're going in with these little chunks of bacon. Get them in, start to fry them off. We want to get a really nice colour on that bacon, get them nice and crisp. We don't want anything too soggy because when you add it back into our ingredients later on, if it's too soggy, then it's just going to mush down. We want a really nice, crisp piece of bacon. So this is going to take anywhere between sort of five and eight minutes. Just keeping it moving, going back in, opening the lid every couple of minutes, seeing what's stuck, moving it on, moving it all around the pan so that we get a nice amount of colour all the way over. And the important thing that's going to come out of this bacon is the grease because we're leaving that in this pan to flavour the rest of our uh, ingredients as we're cooking. So once we've got it nice and crisp, we want to take that bacon out of the pan, get it into a bowl with some kitchen foil, and, and just let that drain so that it's not too greasy when it goes back in. And into our pan, as I say, still with all that bacon grease in the bottom, we're going in with our red onion that we diced up earlier on. So we get that in there, we want to get that looking nice and translucent. And once that colour starts to come out of the onion this is where we're going to add a garlic clove so we're going to drop that in and we don't want to be 
putting that in there for too long before we need to break this fry garlic burns very easy it cooks much much quicker than onion that's why we only put it in right at the last minute when the onion is nearly done and then we break the fry by adding some water so we're going to add two tablespoons of water and get that into the pan and that is going to help us deglaze at the bottom of the pan move um, that sticky bacon fat that's stuck to the bottom and really start to bring the flavors back out of the pan then we're going in with four tablespoons of apple cider vinegar one tablespoon of olive oil one and a half teaspoons of sugar so you can use brown sugar white sugar whatever you want i used white sugar today then we're going on with a nice good heaped tea, uh, tablespoon of mustard so i've used swedish mustard here but you can also use um, a, a dijon mustard as well but i think the swedish mustard really works um, quite well i pick mine up in ikea whenever we're over there and um, it gives it a really nice flavor then we need to be going in with our seasonings so we've got half a teaspoon of sage and half a teaspoon of thyme and our salt and pepper and we're just going to keep incorporating these through the pan so that we've got a really nice sauce in the bottom once that's sort of come together now we need to add our bacon back in so then bacon pieces that we cooked before we're going to get them back into the pan get them incorporated into the sauce and our potatoes that we had cooking indoors so as i say these need to be parboiled probably five to eight minutes if that you don't want to be taking them too far because then when we put them in the pan for this last piece of the cook they're going to mush down too much so we take them parboiled potatoes put them in and we're just going to mix them through this sauce get a nice sort of um, a bit of color all over them potatoes nice lot of flavoring on there and then we shut the lid down and just let that sauce thicken for around five minutes and that will just help finish cook off them potatoes once they've softened down and that sauce is thickened up we can take it off of the kamado and we're going to garnish it with some spring onions so we've just taken a couple of spring onions slice them up nice and thinly and garnished over the top and this is then ready to serve so you want to serve this warm you don't want to be letting this cool because your bacon fat will solidify and it's not going to be such a nice experience so this is ideal to be cooking while your sort of your meat is resting and then when you put it in for that last five minutes um, just to thicken up the sauce and get them potatoes um, softening down slightly you could be carving your meat and then this can go straight onto the table afterwards all nice and warm and it is absolutely fantastic so we've got no taste test today um, because it's half term and it is noisy and um, luckily i found a nice little uh, spot in the evening where there's a light rain and there's nobody out in the garden so i'm able to do my bits to camera this evening but as i say no taste test but i can assure you this tastes absolutely fantastic it's not overly mustardy the swedish mustard is quite mild in its taste so it just all amplifies the flavors the bacon grease is absolutely fantastic you know and i know that anything with bacon in it is just fantastic anyway so make sure you do give this a try if you do give it a try join the facebook community group and share your post back i love to see that other people have um, taken these recipes and either followed them directly or changed them up and made them their own that that really um, pleases me as well and gives me a nice little surprise when i go in and check the notifications so if you like what we're doing here at barbecue life then please do subscribe to the channel Make sure you leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.